Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever time is for you. I'm Cycle Miss. Let's play Train Simulator. Ah, this is a much better view. We can see everything that we have uh, trains for on this route. So the 101 has some scenarios here. Obviously, these came with the 101. The 142 Northern Rail Dot Matrix, I'm not sure what that is, but it's a freeware scenario. So I guess it's uh, something I have. 156, 170 has some stuff here. There's the 47s, which I'm driving right now, that come with the route. The 55 comes with the route, both of them. And the HST. So all the stuff we have is at the bottom. This is all the stuff that comes with the route down here. Uh, and everything up here is just extra stuff. So we're not going to worry about any of that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue with the Spoon to Middleborough today. Uh, then I might consider doing a Deltic next time. So I'll think about what I want to do with that. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and do Spoon to Middleborough today. And then we're going to go ahead and pick something else and drive another train for a little bit here. Because I want to introduce the Deltic. Knowing that I do have a Deltic pack that uh, I also want to introduce at some point. It'll also get us to visit a lot of routes. So it'll be a good way to introduce a few routes here, aside from the scenarios that come with those routes in some cases, uh, because some of them do have really exotic stock requirements. We won't talk about that for right now. But um, yeah, I'm going to definitely do the Spoon to Middleborough today, and that's just basically what I'm doing, the second scenario of the eight that we're going to do. Uh, I also am curious about this big trouble in Tyne Yard. Uh, we're going to have to assemble a consist on that one. And uh, obviously, the uh, if we did that one and the long hop, very assorted Congo consignments. We're going to talk about that one later as well. But uh, with that, no room for slacking or tea breaks. Oh boy. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to do the one we have here today. Drive a BR Class 47 from York to North Allerton. You should experience few problems on the line. Wait, that sounds familiar. Okay, never mind. So we should experience few problems on the line. And that's good. I like having few problems. I like having no problems, to be honest with you. But let's go ahead and get ourselves started, shall we? Hello driver. First things first, and that's to load unload your passengers at York by pressing the T key. Well, that's easy. As soon as that is done, wait for the clock to show 1026 and depart for Thirsk, where you should aim to arrive at 1047. All right. Let's kill that. Let's uh, bring up the HUD. Since the doors are open, we can't do anything right now. So we're just going to get in the cab and get ourselves set up for departure. We are set up for departure. We can turn on the headlights. I didn't do that last scenario, by the way. So I, I, I probably would have gotten fired for that. We won't talk about that. Wipers need to go on. I also, uh, when I used the horn in the prior stereo to show it off once, I actually got tagged at the end of the stereo for improper horn use. I guess we're not supposed to blow our horn at 7 in the morning. So I'm going to take a gamble that we can blow it here. And I'm going to see if it tags me for improper horn use again. Good start. You waited till 1026 to depart. Carry on. Uh, well, I had to get passengers. What do you expect me to do? Oh, brakes off. Be good to follow the steps. So leaving York, our only stop on this journey, it looks like, is Thirsk today. Actually, no, we have a second stop at North Allerton, but our first stop is at Thirsk. I'm going to hold my speed right here for the time being because I see no speed limit indications, and I'm gaining speed. I'm actually a little concerned about that. But we seem to have stopped gaining speed, so that's okay. I'm looking, I was looking at the screen for a moment thinking, is this a bug? I can't see the track very well, but I see a train going by. And it turns out I just can't see behind the um, rain very well. So that was the, um, I'm not sure who that was. There's another service back there, so it's not the one that was highlighted. If I go back and look at the uh, screen here, you can see the train that just came in is indeed this one right here. So that's the one that just came in. Middleborough to Manchester Airport. Middlesbrough. How are you saying it? That's my yellow, isn't it? Nope, we got the green, okay. We're still in a 15. We're not doing anything in terms of speed right now. We got 30 now. Yeah, that's 30 we passed back there also applied to us. I didn't see it on our track, but it did apply to us as well. We're going to be able to get ourselves up to 50 on this journey at least. Possibly faster. The 
we're passing these sidings on the left, which are both ending. We're now on just the main line at this point. I'm keeping our speed just slightly under our uh, target for right now, so I can speed up to 50 when I'm good and ready. You can see there's no timetable, by the way, so I'm not going to rush it. The only timetable stop we had, ironically, was the very first one. Now, in case you want to know where it is we're going on the uh, map here, you can see we started way back here at um, at the end of the route up here at uh, York. So that's where we start. We're going to continue along our journey here. So moving from there, we're going to head to Thirsk, which is all the way up here, first station along the way, and no then North Allerton, which is right there. And if you were to continue on, you're going to find more stations, obviously. They seem very, very minimal on this route. Like, for example, there is Darlington, but we're not going up to Darlington, so that's perfectly fine. We don't care about Darlington today. Those those Darlingtoners, they can do their own thing today. Because we are going to do our own thing. And we're quite happy with that. Excellent. So, back to our journey. We're heading to Thirsk. It's 20, and, 20 miles and change from now. We go up to 50 now, so I'm going to go ahead and push the uh, throttle up to higher power. In fact, I shouldn't put it too high because we're going to go into the 125, and that's where I'm going to max it out. So let's go ahead and just keep it down here at about 50% throttle right now. Well, 49 will do. We'll have a nice casual, gradual increase so that we don't speed into the 125 going too fast. Because speeding in 125 do not really mesh as going fast. Just as we cross into this area, we are now able to open up the throttle to 125. Didn't even have to stop uh, the increase too much there, just a little bit. So we can now open her up. Because going fast is fun, ladies and gentlemen. If you think going fast is fun, make sure you subscribe to that channel where I'm going to go fast as much as I can. And uh, we're also going to uh, have fun as much as I can. Make sure you like this video as well, obviously, because... Uh, I like being liked. It's an ego thing, you know? No, in reality, it's for YouTube, sem um, YouTube um, semantics purposes. YouTube likes knowing that people produce things that are liked. So uh, you have to tell YouTube that you like the content. It makes, it makes them feel good. They don't get their panties in a bunch that way. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure there's much to discuss in terms of commentary here, so I'm just going to go ahead and hop on the roof for a moment. But before we hop on the roof, let's look at our chariot for the day. 47252 is today's chariot. Here we are. Here I am. And uh, here's our passenger stock right behind us here. So uh, once again, looking at the F4 head, I'll show you the passenger stock. That's what we have today. These are the passenger stocks. And they're all like that, I believe. If we go all the way back, we're going to find they're all like that. So that's what we have to work with today. And so let's just keep going all the way. Actually, let's get a nice uh, picture opportunity first before anything else. We get our picture opportunity. There you go. Picture opportunity. Okay, I'm happy with that. And we keep going back and see more of the uh, stock here. Oh, look at that. That's a different car. I think that's more like a restaurant type car right there. And I just went into the train. Whoops. That's a little bit of a different car. Then we can keep going back and that's the end of the train. So there you go. Looks like the windshield, oh, let's change this. Looks like the windshield uh, was building up some rain while we were uh, going, so the wiper didn't want to work until we got back in the cab. Because it wants to show us that it's doing its job properly, so it waits for the build-up to show us it's doing its job properly, which seems counterintuitive if you ask me. Just my opinion, I, I don't know. 
Oh no. One of the weird things about uh, Train Simulator, if you um, if you're in a shelter area, you would have seen this on the Glasgow subway because I accidentally got myself rained on underground once. Uh, if you're in a shelter area and you pop outside and see into an area where it's raining, all of a sudden your train's gonna be drenched. Even if you're under a roof or in underground or in some shelter or whatever the case may be, you will be rained on. The game will rain on you wherever you are if you happen to look outside into the rain or snow or any other falling precipitation matter like, uh, you know, sleet or uh, cows or cats and dogs, you know, they'll be on your windshield. That's how it works. So when we have green signals, so does the other line, coincidentally. Which means I fully expect to be passed by an HSC at some point, except I'm in the HSC's lane, I believe. So, um, good luck passing me. There's a train going by, looks like another passenger service. There are different cars at the back of the train. Now a little less than 14 miles away from Thirsk. We're also now going 94 miles per hour, which appears to be the top end limit. Looks like we cannot top 95 without the, a little help from a hill or something like that. So we're topping out at 94.4. That appears to be as fast as we're gonna go. Fast as we're gonna go. I keep thinking about losing a letter in that. But in any case, uh, we're up to 94.5 now. So just a very, very slow increase where we can get it. Uh, this is basically a mile and a half per minute that we're going right now. So we're gonna be there in about eight minutes, nine minutes. In fact, our ETA is for 10 minutes. So there may be a slowdown somewhere along the way. Such as, you know, coming to a stop at the station. We have to go slower to come to a stop. That's that's probably going to account for the slowdown right there. So as far as I know, this train cannot stop on a dime. And trust me, there are trains that stop on a dime. Put a dime right there, it'll stop on it. Because it's not supposed to run it over. Of course, if you put it on when it's coming right towards you, it's going to get crushed. We won't talk about that. Not that I have any experience per se. I have better things to do than throw dimes at trains. I spend them. I spend my dimes. green signals once again.
So our journey update, we're eight and three quarters miles away from Thirst. I think we've confirmed that 94.5 is our effective speed limit. We're not going to go any faster. But wait till we get our hands on HST. That will change. I promise you, that will change. Interestingly enough, I noticed there are no Class 37 scenarios included with this route, which I was actually surprised by because the Class 37 comes with the game. And I know the Class 37 has been seen on this route a lot. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm kind of curious why the Ku-237 didn't make an appearance on this route, especially when it got used on Headboro North. That and the Class 47 both got put to use on that fictional route. And I believe they, one or both, also appear for some reason on Steve Bergbahn, as well as the uh, DR-101, which is a normal German train. Uh, but for some reason, I think even the Black 5 appears on that route, on that Seaburg Bond route, which is very, very interesting. I will, of course, get to showing all these fictional routes. Uh, I've already shown you Castle Rock Railroad and Cahun Pass, the most fictional route of all. Maybe. Uh, in any case, yeah, I've already shown you Castle Rock Railroad. I've already shown you Great Western Main Line, Cahun Pass, which was, which was actually, believe it or not, so old that it's pre-railworks. It came before the railworks days, so you could probably call that route zero in this case because it was pre-railworks. So I still have to show you uh, Somerset and Dorset. I still have to show you C. Bergbahn. I still have to show you Headborough North. And, um, oh, and Ruhr C. Route number four is the Ruhr C route. I have to show you that as well. I have been looking through some um, information on old DLCs and trying to acquire some of the old scenarios. Of course, I can't play them. We're not going to talk about that, but what I can do is I can substitute stock in them. And I actually do have some interesting scenarios for the uh, route number four, and I may actually do something very non-prototypical with uh, those. I mean, they're already non-prototypical. You'll see what I mean when we get to them. But uh, I may do a very interesting substitution on that. Something worth noting as well is I do not have the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 66 Enhancement Pack installed right now. Uh, I want to point that out because I did have that installed in the past. I don't think I ever showed you any of the content for it, but just in case I did, because uh, I, I, I do want to re-record and get it shown to you if I haven't, so just in case I haven't shown any of it to you, uh, it does show uh, in the... When you go to play a scenario using the regular version of the train, when it's programmed to be the regular version of the train, the game will give you a track stop being an error. And I have seen on other stairs where I've shown it to you as well, uh, with other trains, which I don't know why I get it on other trains. But um, if you play with a different version of the train, it will give you a track stop bin error because stop finding exactly what's in the scenario files because you you know you edited that. Sim simple as that. So if you try to make edits in TS Tools or Loco Swap, it will try to give you an error and try and tell you not to play it. Uh, th there are two options for that. One, play it anyway, don't care. Or two actually clone it, make another, edit that one as much as you can, then substitute that and place the original, and guess what? You, you won't have an error. You won't have any errors at all. You may still get the track stop being error, but it will still play in that case. Because at that point, scenario.bin would have updated as well. We are being given a uh, flashing junction change here. We have to get ourselves down to 75 in a hurry, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I should probably um, address the passengers. Attention passengers, we are approaching Thirsk as our next stop. You may have noticed this by the fact that I suddenly hit the brakes and I have an alarm going in my cab, which you probably overheard. So uh, be prepared to uh, disembark my train Immediately upon stopping at Thirsk, we are going to have a lurch slowing down to 30 miles per hour now. So uh, prepare to lose your lunch. It will be done in a gradual fashion. Thirsk is right behind that. So uh, be prepared to uh, get off my train. Thank you. <laughs> there, that's done. And uh, now come to Thirsk. 
and having another alarm. This alarm is accompanied by a green signal, but the alarm is for the junction indicator. I stopped my, I slopped. I stopped my slowdown at 57 for right now because I want to at least maintain some speed for a little while. If you were on a timetable, you'd actually be expected to probably hang out at 70 for a while because the uh, game would really, really want you to manage your speed in unrealistic racehorse, racehorse fashion. But we're going to go ahead and hit the brakes again now. And those brakes are coming on very nicely, so I'm going to take them off again. I'm just going to put a minimal... Oh, that 2% brake is doing a lot. My goodness, I didn't expect that. But I need more brakes than that, so I'm up to 8, 12. Okay, just put a big brake application on, please. Excellent, that'll do. So we're at a 30 right now. Looks like a truck going by on the highway up ahead there. You can see it on the right. We are now going to a join Thirst platform in just a moment. So I'm putting another brake application on to slow down coming in. Because this platform looks tiny. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get the entire train in the platform, so I might take the engine and put it beyond the platform, because I think that's the appropriate thing to do here. So I'm going to put the engine beyond the platform and put as many cars in the station as I can. So I'm going to continue beyond as I previously dictated. Take the brakes off for a moment, because I want to actually coast through. My train can coast through. The passenger cars cannot. I'm not going to get them all completely in the station, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to deal with that. Doors are open at Thirsk. And we're halfway through our journey. Your book departure time from here is 1047. Do not leave before this time. What if I do? My boarding is completed. I can leave whenever I want to. Yeah, never mind. So, oh, this might be why. That's why we don't get to leave early. 1S20 had the road uh, ahead of us, apparently. The 615 service. That is a long service. Bristol Temple means to Edinburgh? Yeah, okay. That's a long journey. So I've removed my brakes so I can get going. We're going to go ahead and just go now. All right, let's go. So we're entering 125 mile per hour speed limit as we leave Thirst. And normally I would say leaving Thirst, we're going at a speed limit of 125 miles per hour as we exit the platform. But unfortunately we have a 75 coming up, so we're going to be not even at that by the time we are allowed to... Um, in fact, we're already going into the uh, 30, so the 125 might have been for a different line. You can see the area we're in, no, that would have been the same line. So apparently we somehow got a uh, lowering the 30 somewhere in there. Not sure how that happened, but it happened. So we do have our green signals now. We are going to be at North Alton at about seven miles and change. But at the speeds we're going, it might take a little while for us to get there. So we're going to get ourselves up to 75 in just a moment. Should I speed? Maybe. Now, in addition to all this East Coast Mainline stuff and the other... Uh, old routes I need to show you. I do need to get back to Stevens Pass as well. I previously recorded the, uh, I don't know, four or five hours of driving that was involved in the uh, introductory scenarios there. And then uh, that content, unless I can find it on my external drive somewhere, uh, I have to assume that content may have also been lost. I don't know how it got lost, but it might also be lost. 
Thought I backed it up, maybe I didn't. It might still be there and I might still be able to bring that content back to show you. If not, I'll just have to re-record them you know, for the third time because the first time didn't have audio, the second time was the one I'm trying to keep and the third time would just be, by this point, I should know root perfectly by now, right? No, I don't. <laughs> it's a freight route, don't expect me to memorize it. Oh, we should go 75 now, let's do that. Originally, Stevens Pass was supposed to be right after my West Somerset Railway coverage, but I decided to, um, I, it was, I was absolutely due to visit uh, this route because I had to get another old route in there after showing some of the new stuff. I had to get another really old route in here. And I figured, you know what, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and delay Stevens indefinitely because uh, I don't have as much content for that as I do for some other routes. I will get it in here. I do want to play it because it's a beautiful route. It's one of the best routes you're going to see from old days in Train Simulator. I might even put ahead of Mariah's Pass, uh, and I like that route. So at some point we are going to get to uh, Stevens Pass, and I do have, uh, I do know of a scenario pack from uh, High Iron Simulations now that's also available that covers Mariah's Pass. I do want to show you some of the workshop scenarios though, because anyone can buy and play those uh, items in the Steam store, but not everyone goes to the Steam workshop. So I want to show you some of the workshop content you can play on that route as well. I will get back to Mariah's and show you some of that as well. But I may do the scenario pack as well. We'll see. And I do have a lot of other uh, route trains I have to put on that route and show you as well, like the GP38-2. Uh, the F45 is going to have to go on there whenever I can finally get that to work. It still doesn't work, and I've never had it work, so I don't know why. Maybe I should contact Steam about that F45. That's a weird little problem that maybe they can resolve. I don't think DDG can fix that one because I've tried talking to DDG about that one. It seems to be something they, that they can only plague and doesn't seem to get fixed. uphill gradient which is why I'm losing a little speed so I have to concentrate on managing my speed right now but we are over the mile per minute mark right now so uh, we are doing good for time and for speed at this point we should be at our destination in a little less than four minutes at this point maybe even closer to three or three and a half minutes so crossing 1052 in 30 seconds a moment ago we'll see how we did for timing there See if I got my math right on that. Of course, we're going to probably lower our speed limit as we come into uh, North Allerton anyway. Then the train will continue to Darlington without us because, you know, that's what the train does. It keeps going even if we're not on it. It's not like they can pull over behind you and uh, take you in the other direction or take you to your business place of the day for the day, you have to actually let the train go on without you because you're going to leave the track. And we're going to leave the track. So we're going to continue to along our uphill gradient here as we come to a 50 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm going to let the train coast right now as we approach that 50. I will lose a little speed, but I will have to brake some as I get up there as well. We're now coming down to very close to two and a half miles away from North Allerton, which I believe we're going to be crossing right about now. We're only down to 72.5 miles per hour. Yes, the braking application will most indubitably be required. Now to 71.5. Yeah, this is not going to be coasting down on its own. I will have to put some brakes on. Here's another train going by. This is 1807 to King's Cross from Newcastle. The 957 service. It started before we did, apparently. 
And let's put the brakes on. Our brake power is not enough, so I have to add some more brakes. There's the warning of the 50. Taking the brakes off. We're now under a 50. You can see North Alton straight ahead. Literally a mile away from the beginning of the platform. And now a mile away from the end of the platform. So it's a short platform. We're going to have to try to fit much of the train in here again. Attention passengers, you may have noticed back at first I was not able to fit all of you on the platform. So if you wanted to disembark and you didn't, I sincerely apologize. I could not get you on the platform. It is a process of natural selection. So uh, if I don't stop your train on the platform, please don't mind. It means you're destined to stay with us on the way to Darlington. Uh, make sure you settle in and enjoy the journey if that's the case. I'm going to be leaving you and if someone else is going to try to push buttons here and hopefully not crash the train for you. Uh, on that wonderful thought. Have a nice day, and uh, we're about to stop at North Alton. Thank you. So we're going to increase our brake application now. Because of the rain, I'm trying not to do anything to cause wheel slip here. That would be the worst thing I could do right now. Notice that North Alton has a platform right there. That could be a disused platform as well, but that's in the other direction. So I believe it is actually the platform for the other direction. I do see passengers waiting there. So uh, that is definitely used for something at North Alton. There you go. Then we cross the bridge, then we reach our part of the platform right here. So there is this little section here where both parts of the platform are next to each other. But then we are going to branch out a little bit on the other side of the platform here. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and put my cab beyond because it's not a passenger cabin. So my cab is going to go beyond the track once again as we finish. But I will try to get the uh, cars as many as possible to stay within the platform limits. Actually, it looks like my, car, my train might still be on the platform after all this. And there's a coal train coming through, coal 2 is on the way through right now so that is what is coming right now I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here because this is perfect I like this spot this is where I want to be and doors are gonna open that's the end of the scenario as the coal train goes by let's take a look at the train so that's the end of that that's uh, two 35 minute journeys taken care of and as we watch this coal train go by behind us while our passengers disembark, we're going to be congratulated on our wonderful journey in just a moment, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, just a bunch of coal cars going by. Not much to report. You can see some of the buildings from the 70s, 80s era of the Great West, Great Eastern Main Line, or East Coast Main Line, sorry. Well done. Another driver will take over for the run to Millsboro, and you can take a well-earned break. I thought so. I only went two stations and this is a well-earned break. Are you serious? I think Millsboro is basically where you leave the line. So uh, you know that announcement I made to Darlington? I lied to them. That's what I do. Anyway, that's the end of the Sarah. Like, like the uh, video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can join my Discord server. I have a Patreon. All that's going to be in the description. Other than that, uh, have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever is for you, your part of the world. And there will be more videos for this coming up. So keep an eye on those videos coming up as well. And uh, make sure you enjoy those and like them as well because I love putting the content for you and I'm going to keep doing it. So I hope, again, have a wonderful day, evening, or night. I'll see you next time for more Let's Play Train Simulator. I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.